Hello everyone, in this presentation, I will be talking about a topic aware model of hate speech diffusion on Twitter. It comes as no surprise that hate speech has become one of the most prominent areas of research in today's time. While most of the research on hate speech focuses on flagging whether a content is hateful or not, the destructive power of hate lies in its ability to spread and continue to diffuse the negative sentiment associated with it. Who are the users who are generating hateful content? Can we predict who are the followers of these users who are most likely to diffuse hate? What is the interplay of the various topical as well as the exogenous signals on the spread of hate are some of the questions that we try to study. For the purpose of the study, we collected a Twitter data set of tweets, retweets, users, history, the follow network, as well as the timeline of the people present in the follow network. This data set was collected over a span of three months covering more than 20 uh, topics of socio-political interest happening within India. Since these events were actually influenced by the real world uh, events happening outside of the Twitter platform, we need a way to capture how these external events or external signals uh, you know, uh, channel the discourse happening on Twitter and thereby uh, promote hate. For this purpose, we collected news articles published across the web during the same time frame as that of our Twitter data set. And using a combination of on-platform and external signals, we try to determine who are the set of users who are most likely to generate hate for a topic. And once we have determined those uh, hateful users, can we now determine which followers of these users are most likely to retweet uh, this hateful tweet and thereby agreeing to the negative sentiment of, of this tweet uh, continue to spread the hate? Some initial observation of our data set is consistent with what previous research on hate speech also conclude that hate spreads faster compared to non-hate. We can see from the retweet engagement that non-hateful content takes almost four times as much as a hateful content to reach similar level of user engagement. At a tropical level, we see that uh, different topics or hashtags here receive different level of user engagement and even for topics that have similar level of user engagement, the uh, amount of hateful uh, engagement within these interactions can vary. At a more granular level, we see that while most of the time users are uh, you know, non hateful in nature, or most of the communication on Twitter is non hateful, there can be certain point of contention that drive user to post extremely hateful content like in case of user zero and user six. In fact, even for users that constantly propagate hateful uh, content like user two, we see that their propensity for hate varies for different topics. There by capturing the uh, presence of topical influence as well as exogenous influence, can we you know, answer the questions of uh, determining the hateful users and then uh, predicting the followers who are likely to spread the hate? For the first question, we model it as a hate generation problem where given a topic, we want to determine how likely is the user to ha post something hateful on this topic. This is driven by the presence of on-platform or endogenous signals like the trending topics, as well as the exogenous signals or the news articles that we earlier talked about. This information is also influenced by the user's own history, whereby we are able to capture what are the topics this user has engaged in? If we know that this user, you know, engages in controversial or hateful topics, then it is highly likely that given a new controversial topic, this user will post something hateful about it. Based on this, we uh, build various uh, 
uh, classification models and see that using a down sample uh, data set with decision tree gives us the best F1 score in determining whether a user will post something hateful or not. In terms of accuracy, SVM and Adaboost give us the best performance. Now, once we have determined these hateful users, the next task is to predict from the time this uh, hateful post has, uh, you know, been put up on the platform, who are the followers of these users who will be uh, retweeting this hateful post. Here, we take into account the follow network in addition to the exogenous, endogenous signals, as well as the history of the followers, which again captures their tendency to engage in hateful content. We see that uh, by using a window-based approach, we are able to model the diffusion of hate into, uh, into categories. The first is where we do not consider the time at which the retweet happened, which means that a user posting or uh, retweeting something hateful at the very beginning of uh, a hateful content being put up or a user posting some, uh, retweeting something hateful towards the end of the discourse carry same amount of influence for further diffusion. And we also take into account the di uh, dynamic retweet prediction, where we say that uh, within the window of uh, time period delta t, who are the users who have posted something hateful? And here we take into account the time at which the retweet happened. This is again underpinned by our observation that most of the hateful content spreads very quickly. Therefore, a user who is engaging in this hateful content at a later stage in time may not be able to influence the spread of hate as much as the users who are engaging it earlier uh, in with it earlier until unless the user is trying to trigger another set of hateful thread three modules in the first one we try to capture the influence of the external signals in the diffusion modeling here we make use of the attention mechanism note that we do not have a one-to-one -one mapping between the tweet content and the news headlines but we want to capture uh, the idea that some of the external events may have influenced the content of the post. For this, we take the most recent news articles published right before the tweet was posted and then determine the attention or the influence of these uh, news articles on the given tweet. The output from our exogenous tension is given to a feed forward network, which also takes the follower information as input and combining the follower information with the exogenous attention embedding, it tries to determine the probability for a given follower to retweet this hateful uh, post. Uh, note that the post can be non hateful as well. The hatefulness is captured as a feature of the text itself. Now, for the static modeling, the temporal ordering of the retweet does not matter. However, in case of the diffusion dynamic, uh, the dynamic diffusion, we take into account the order in which the retweet occur, both at the follower level as well as the different windows. Here, in order to capture this temporal dynamic, we replace the last layer of the static uh, network, the feed forward layer with a JRU layer. What this does is that at a follower level, we are now able to capture the decay in influence that this uh, tweet has on the follower who's posting or retweeting at a later stage in the diffusion, as well as the influence that one uh, a retweet window can have on another one, which is captured by passing the output of the uh, GRU uh, of the GRU of the previous window to the next one. Here again, the uh, input at the individual window is the feature of the follower, and the output is the retweet probability of that follower to post uh, something hateful or non hateful present in the exogenous attention tweet. 
we compare the performance of our model against a suit of baselines and observe that our system built on exogenous attention largely outperforms the classical machine learning models that use the exogenous signal like just another input feature. While logistic regression does seem to be performing comparably well to that of our uh, the static retina model, on closer inspection, controlling for the exogenous influence, we see that the performance of all models uh, for a retweet prediction decrease in absence of the exogenous signal. However, this decrease is most significant for the logistic regression model that seems to be overfitting on the exogenous signal and depending on it heavily for the purpose of a uh, retweet prediction. While throughout this paper, we established the importance of exogenous signal and ex external influence for pre uh, predicting the diffusion within a platform, we are also cognizant of the fact that such exogenous influence is not always easy to obtain and readily available. Therefore, we would want a diffusion system to uh, to be able to run effectively even in scenarios when such uh, exogenous signals are not available. Here we see that our systems, while again, as I said, show a decrease in performance in absence of exogenous signals, the impact or, or, or the decrease in performance is not that much. You may also be noticing that the accuracy of all the classifiers is greater than 90%, but this, owing to the skewness in the distribution of the hateful versus non-hateful tweet, is not a good measure uh, to determine the, uh, the efficacy of the system, and therefore we stick to uh, comparing the performance using the macro F1 and the AOC scores. We additionally run comparison of the diffusion model proposed by us versus some state-of-the-art neural diffusion models. And we see that systems such as Forest, Tidan, and TopoLSTM that depend only on the network information or the network topology for cascade prediction do not perform well for the hateful or non-hateful diffusion model where contextual information is of importance. Again, we see that while Topo LSTM compares fairly well in comparison to our system and even outperforms the re static retina system, on closer inspection, controlling for the hateful and non-hateful tweets, we see that while for the non-hateful tweets, Topo LSTM performs as well as like that of the retina model, it is for the hateful tweet that its performance significantly drops. This happens because in absence of any other contextual information, topile esteem depends only on the network topology to learn uh, to infer the pattern for diffusion. With not hateful tweets, it has enough cascades to train and learn these patterns from. However, owing to the sparsity of uh, the cascades available for the hateful uh, tweets, it is not able to learn such patterns. However, our retina model that makes use of the contextual information along with the follow network is able to learn such patterns better. One can conclude that the use of contextual information like the exogenous signals, the endogenous signals, the topical information, the temporal ordering, and the user history provide the diffusion model with enough latent information to effectively capture the uh, the cascades or the uh, the diffusion pattern for hateful tweets even when their data is sparse and this contextual information is useful for both generation as well as diffusion of hate speech Thank you.